Hey guys, welcome to Approach the Nerd. It's your girl, Maria Park. And in this video, I had the honor once again of interviewing two talented actors from the Orville New Horizons. That is Penny Johnson Gerald, who plays Dr. Claire Finn, and Mark Jackson, who plays our favorite Kalon Isaac. So without further ado, here's our video. So Mark, uh, Penny, thank you for being here first off. Um, let me just jump right into my first question, and it is an Isaac question. If you remember when I interviewed you, hopefully before the season started, I had lots to say about Isaac. <laughs> so I'm going to start it there. And I <laughs> couldn't say anything. Could I? <laughs> I know. Well, you can yeah. now, and that's all that matters. Um, all right. So my first question about Isaac, because I you know I'm struggling with his humanity, because as I told you, as a voice actor myself, I know how hard it is to bring life to inanimate objects. And I, I'm, I just, you prove me right every time that you are brilliant at this. You put this brightness in him. And I, I'm telling you, he's so human to me that it's just, I don't feel human when I watch Isaac. Um, so I noticed something in this season. So I just want to pick your brain on. And that is how you are visually. So when you're able to be him physically in his human form, it's the complete opposite. To me, you feel less human looking human. Is that a choice that you made physicality wise? Because you just, it's like your entire being is frozen in time. And I don't know if you caught that or not, or if anyone's ever said that to you, but I'm just curious on that decision. That's a really interesting observation. Um, and I'm very pleased about it, actually, uh, that you feel that way because, you know, when I'm, when I am playing him as a human, I have to really rein myself in and not go to where every actor wants to go and to really feel and emote and um, to be naturalistic as well. I mean, you know, actors love to try and be as naturalistic as possible. It's con sort of considered good acting in a sense. It's considered believable acting, and it often is. But with Isaac, it, there's none of that. I mean, he's still, apart from when he had his emotion chip in, he is, um, he is an artificial intelligence who has a um, a VR cloak on him? You know, he is he's not uh, he's not he's not really human. He's far from it. He's an alien, you know. And, he, and to keep him like that was was the challenge. And I had to I had to be on my toes with it. Um, I think what's interesting about when he's human is that we have to remember that that he's he's decided to look that way. He's projecting what he has designed for the the world to see him as um and i think you know that it, to, to remember that is really useful it's artifice when you see him as a human yeah yeah i think it's brilliant and and i love that you kind of brought up my next question so his emotions so the way isaac reacts is the way a human react and what i mean by that if you look up the definition of humanity it basically just states that we're people that look to the future and make decisions based on what we think the outcome will be well i mean that's humanity then that's a computer so i mean isaac's more human than most of us so mm -hmm. i guess my question is do you feel like isaac has his own evolution of emotions he's different from the other kalon do you think he's able to not even need a chip eventually because um just a really quick example when when claire gets called to the bridge after you you know you sorry isaac invites four thousand kalon to the wedding <laughs> and you know claire gives him this look like you know you've effed up and he kind of turns around slowly that is a human reaction that is not a machine so what do you think about that Oh yeah, he's used to getting the evil eyes from from Claire, <laughs> um, <laughs> and she does it so well. I mean, that's that's it's it's hard not to react like that. I think. Um, uh, let me think. Uh, yes, is he? He's evolving. I think he is evolving, and I think he is. I think I think he's slowly reprogramming himself, and I, you know, it, you've got to be careful. You can't say he's getting emotions. He's developing emotions. I feel like the best way of looking at it is he's developing an emotional understanding. Um, he's he's seeing everything but the emotion and sort of like filling the space himself somehow. Um, but it's a slow process, strewn with hazards. And um, and I think, you know, it's there's a lot to explore in there. You know, he's not trying to be human. He's an alien and he's keeping that to himself. You know, he's keeping that there. 
And it's about keeping that core of him intact in and not losing it to the sort of becoming a human thing. But, you know, trying to understand them better. I love that. And actually, you just described what being a human's journey is. You know, anyway, it's on their way. I see. A human the rest of us. I see what you mean. It's very confusing. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. like... <laughs> He's something that we can aspire to in many ways, I, I, I think, I suspect. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Um, hi, Penny. So um, I'm going to pick your brain too. I'm going to ask you some questions on um, um, Claire's journey with Isaac. But first, she said something um, when she was asking Kelly to be her maid of honor that I was just very curious about. What's go- what do you think's going on with Claire and her sister that her sister didn't even come to the wedding? What is happening? <laughs> you know, um, I... Penny asked that that question too. I said, what's going on with my sister? And then I thought, does Seth know something about Penny's sister? <laughs> you, know, like, you, know, like, you know, I got a lot of sisters. I was thinking, hmm, am I getting along with all my sisters right now? Uh, hmm. Well, I don't know. Um, actually, that is that's out there to be discovered. And hopefully if we uh, go into another season, we'll get to explore that. But I was blown away by that myself because I didn't. So I just created something, you know, for what it was. And I just chucked it off as uh, a disagreement where, and we all often have those, where it's like, you know what? You're closer to your friend than me. Something's wrong there. And I just went with it. I see Kelly all the time. We do have a lot in common. And we are a new family on this ship. And we've gotten very close. So um, I just, I just in my head, uh, my sister just has a problem. She'll get over it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering if that was kind of like an Easter egg for season four, if we're going to see the problems with... Uh, I was, yes, Easter egg. That's the, yeah. But yeah, they're strewn throughout season three. So hopefully, hopefully... <laughs> Yeah, fingers crossed. And we better get a season four. This show is awesome. So, um, all right. So, Claire. Claire has had a journey with Isaac. It has gone from kind of like this adoration thing to <laughs> kind of understanding. Then he semi-betrayed the crew. When I'm saying semi, he came to his senses. But then there was the betrayal, the hurt, the anger, the acceptance. He went through all these ranges of emotions. But you're always, you've always known or the character has always known that Isaac has loved her, even though we're still playing with this emotion and this hum- you know, humanity thing in Isaac. Why do you think that is? Well, because, um, you know, I, I say this often, and it's worth saying again, Isaac cannot lie. And to me, when a person cannot lie, they're like godlike. And that's something you just, whoa, want to be so close to. And why wouldn't you want someone who cannot lie, who is the real deal, uh, to be there with you when you're still parenting two young boys into manhood, you know? And so um, I think on that level, that's something she admires greatly. And it started out when I think it was the first season when uh, the kids get lost and Isaac goes with her and he clearly states, you know, you're you're not the best parent you think you are. And he just says it as a matter of fact, but he's absolutely right because he can see, he can see all things, you know, um, it's that omnipresent situation. And so that's something that's very attractive uh, to her and the, the arc or the journey to reaching the actually falling in love is when she first had a physical um, situation with him where, um, you know, for that moment, he became human, and they were able to do something that grown people do, which is they were able to make love. And I think that that intimate setting touched her in a way, and she says that, like, no one has ever, uh, forget all that real sexy stuff, but it's the emotional connection that she felt where he helped her become completely who she is which is not just a doctor, not just a mother, but a woman and, uh, and appreciate it. And so I don't think that ever left her and coupled with the fact, yes, there was betrayal, but still, even with that betrayal, you know, it would, um, sometimes it, well, 99 out of nine, uh, a uh, 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 hundred times, it means that someone's lying about something, but because he's not able to lie, it's something she missed. 
you know? Yeah. He missed it. He's still being honest with where he was and how he had to do things. So, um, again, the truthfulness and that is so genuine and being a, a mature woman who's been through so many relationships on that ship, I think Claire just welcomes something very solid. And I think Isaac's the one. That is awesome. Yeah, they're my, they're my favorite couple. Um, everyone else is like, well, Mercer and Grace are going to get together. I'm like, ah, forget that. What about Claire and Isaac? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I've, sh- I've shipped you literally since episode three before the big episode. Oh, my so God. I've always thought you guys would be cute together. Um, okay, so let's talk about the Kalon, their, probish- their probationary union membership. Does this mean that Isaac gets his his status back as like the Kalon representative or how does that work? Do you or do you not know? Let's see what happens if there's a season four. <laughs> That's it. You see, we keep on bringing up <laughs> wealth of stuff we can explore in season four. Um, does he? Yeah, I mean, does he? Well, he is science officer on the order, isn't he? But does yes. he want? Does he want? Yeah, does he want to be? Would he want that role? Yeah, even though he's a married, he's married now. He's a married man, so. Or will they send another ambassador? Ooh. I mean, like, who knows? I mean, would it be nice to have two Kalons on the ship? I don't know. You know, I noticed in that, uh, uh, was it the final or no, episode nine, um, where everyone was represented and there were two. It was almost like Noah and the Ark. <laughs> two oh, <of> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the council, the Union Council. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought, wow, I, I, I didn't realize that there, there are never more than one of another species. The, the humans, there are all of us, and it's diversified. But all the other species, I, I don't think we have more than one on the ship. So for you to say, oh, wouldn't it be interesting, two Isaacs, I thought, whoa, I see two of these and two of, oh, no, we have two Mach- well, we have three Mocklins. Ah, I take that back. Okay, but right, thank you. <laughs> right now we have zero Mocklins because they're all there with the krill right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's interesting, though. Um, so let's talk about Ensign Burke. Did, did you guys get like any kind of warning that she's going to make this huge sacrifice and not be on the show anymore, or did it become was it a shock for you guys as castmates? Well, I didn't know. Penny chooses not to know, but I didn't know. <laughs> oh no! So I'd read that script. I mean, I, Seth is really good. So at the beginning of the season, if you want it, which most people do, but Penny does not, um, he'll say, look, I'll send you all the scripts that relate to your character arc so you can have a read. And of course, that episode really does relate to Isaac's arc. So I did read that. Um, and I think her death, I think her death is a very brilliant way of tying up her story and... It's it's so it's so heavily influences Isaac's journey from being a pariah to being accepted at the end that it was just beautifully written I think um, and it kind of had to happen in a way almost. What do you think? I, I love I love that arc because uh, you know just uh, just the Charlie story itself someone who comes on self centered and just full of so much. Um, uh bitterness because of this one thing that happened to her and then to give her life the sacrificial lamb to do that for the greater good of not just humans but kalons and life itself it says a lot and it just brings me back to the depth of the storylines that the Orville speaks of um, and speaks on and, and we can dive deeper and we can touch humanity on a level that, you know, we don't often think about, but there are sacrifices that many of us can make and for the greater good. I'm not saying we should all go out (laughs) and kill, but but there are certain sacrifices. So it, it, it's, it sets you up to just have a thought in your head, have, the decisions that I make, this is Penny speaking, you know, after uh, seeing it. Am I making decisions because I'm just this selfish person? Or if I, am I making decisions that are going to be good for me, but they're really going to be good for uh, people past myself? So uh, that, that was a really nice arc that I enjoyed. Hmm. 
Right. So I know that I have a, a lot of time left, but um, really quickly, if you do get a season four, where do you want your characters to go? I well, think we can have a off. I think we can have a spinoff. I mean, I start thinking of George Jet, uh, the Jetsons, or something <laughs> with the, the, the Thin Family. I, I don't know. I really want to see what it's like um, at home. You know, and not getting boring because I know when you get married on a series, sometimes it's just freaking boring because it's nothing that's happening. But with a classic situation, there's so many issues that we can um, discuss. And so I'm excited. I'm excited about that. I think you're right. You know, it's all about exploring this marriage, this new kind of uh, AI human marriage. I mean, what does that look like? Um, particularly in relation with the boys and like the living arrangements and there's a whole thing there's a whole 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 world they need to figure out together and I think that has to be the heart of it um, will the Kalon stay on board who knows I mean figuratively stay on board as in keep <laughs> on side uh, one would hope so but in in uh, galactic uh, politics nothing is certain uh, yeah, I think Isaac's not started a journey uh, personally of of changing himself, and and I I want to see him. I want to see where that can go. Yeah. yeah, I would watch that reality show, and it would be number one on my DVR. Um, and, and I also <laughs> would love for the Kalons to have female voices Ooh. trying to figure out. In there. <laughs> I don't think they're a patriarchal society, but you never know. So you know, something well, that I just thought about. So yeah, their voices can be whatever they want them to be. I exactly. <laughs> But you have been amazing. Thank you so much. This has been very enjoyable. I've got my fingers crossed, toes crossed, everything for season four. So put that yeah. good juju out to Disney. Um, and again, great job on this season. You guys are my favorite characters and it has been amazing. So yay. Thank have you. <laughs> Thank, cool. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Um, Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it. But hey, the party doesn't have to stop now. Click on one of these videos and keep it going.